Hello mathematicians, thank you for joining me today. As we look at the set of vectors, 3, 5, 2, 1, 7, 8, 9, 3, 3, and 4, 2, 7, and we want to determine if this set of vectors is linearly independent, a spanning set of r cubed, or if it is a basis for r cubed. In order to answer that question, what we want to know is that we're going to be looking at linear combinations of these vectors and we're going to ask different questions. So, for our linear combinations, we're going to take C1 times 3, 5, 2 plus C2 times 1, 7, 8 plus C3 times 9, 3, 3 plus C4 times 4, 2, 7. Now, if we want to check for linear independence, what we're going to check is we're going to say, let this be equal to the zero vector. And we want to know, is the only solution that each of these is zero? If that's not the case, then it's linearly dependent. And if we're checking for spanning, what we're going to do is we're going to let these be arbitrary elements of R. And we're going to want to know, does this have a solution for each X, Y, and Z? In order to answer both of those questions, what we're going to do is realize that, well, we can turn this into a matrix equation, and then from that matrix equation, we can try to use our solutions for solving matrices, and then we can use that to determine whether we're linearly independent or a spanning set. All right, so if we take this equation and turn it into a matrix equation, what we're gonna do is we have to have C1 times this plus C2 times that, C3 times this plus C4 times that, so the way we can do that is we can turn these vectors into column matrices. And so our vectors are going to become 3, 5, 2. Our second column is 1, 7, 8. And then 9, 3, 3. And then 4, 2, 7. And if I multiply that by C1, C2, C3, C4, you'll notice that when I multiply, I'm taking 3 times C1 plus 1 times C2 plus 9 times C3 plus 4 times C4. So really what I'm getting is each of the three components for these vectors added together. And what I want to get out is precisely just the vector x, y, z based on what x, y, z are. So solving this equation is the same as solving this equation. Now if we want to solve this matrix equation, what we can do is we can take this and we can take this matrix and augment it with the solution matrix x, y, z, and then we can row reduce it to get a solution out. Actually, you'll notice that I row reduced this matrix into this matrix. If I want to see that there are solutions or if it is a spanning set or if there's only a unique solution for when these are zero or if it's linearly independent, what I need to do is basically look at this and determine what my solutions would look like. Now, if we look at this, we notice that on the right-hand side, even though these look messy, X, Y, and Z are just constants. So this really is just some constant that we could call, say, D, E, and F, just to give them names. Now, if I want to find a solution or solve as a solution, what I can do is, well, there's a bunch of stuff going on here, so let's let C4 be zero, and this simplifies nicely. This just says that C1 is equal to C1, plus zero is equal to this. So whatever number this happens to be, let's call it D is C1. Now this says that C2 plus zero is equal to this equation. So C2 is just E, whatever number that happens to be. On the other hand, we get C3 is equal to whatever this happens to be. So we'll call that F. So for any X, Y, and Z real numbers, we can let C1 be this number, C2 be this number, and C3 be this number, and C4 be zero, and we will get out a solution. So what that means is that this is a spanning set. Now if we look at that, we don't necessarily need to go through that whole process because all we're interested in is that there is a solution. So what we're really looking for here is, regardless of what happens over here on the equality side, if we row reduce this portion, we just want to know, is there a leading one in this row? Is there a leading one in this row? And is there a leading one in this row? That is the leading non-zero number from the left is one. If there is a one in each of those rows, then we do get that it is a spanning set 
because I can find a solution by letting everything else be zero and the CIs that correspond to the leading ones being whatever these numbers are and I'll get out a solution. Now on the other hand, if I let X, Y, and Z all be zero, what you're gonna notice is that all of these are gonna simplify nicely because zero plus zero plus zero times something is still zero and so these just become zero. Now, if I wanted to find a solution to this equation, I could do the same thing, and I could let C1 equals C2 equals C3 equals zero. But what I want to know for linear independence is, are there any other options? Well, what you'll notice here is that C4 is actually a free variable, so we can let it be anything we want. So we could say, let that be one. So if C4 is one, we would say, okay, C1 minus 4936 is zero. So we can let C1 be 49 over 36. Same way we can let C2 be negative 11 twelfths. And we can let C3 be negative 43 over 54. And you'll notice that we have that C4, C1, C2, and C3, at least one of those is non-zero. And we're able to find a solution to the system of equations where we have all zeros over here. So what that means is that this is a linearly dependent set. Now, if I look at that again, I don't actually need to know the solution. I just need to know if there is such a solution. And so by noting that there's a free variable at all, that means that there's going to be more than the trivial solution if I plug in zeros over here. That is, if I want to determine if this set of vectors is linearly independent, it is going to be linearly dependent if there are any free variables, and it's going to be linearly independent if there are no free variables when I've row reduced my matrix. So now to recap that, what happened was is that this side really didn't matter. So instead of worrying about augmenting it with the X, Y, Z is I could take my original matrix and I can row reduce it. If the number of leading ones is the same as the number of rows, then we have that it is a spanning set. If there are any free variables, then it's linearly dependent. If there are not any free variables, then it is linearly independent. So in this case, we have a spanning set of vectors, which is literally dependent. Now, as far as whether or not this is a basis, well, it's a basis if it's both linearly independent and a spanning set. Since this is literally dependent, it's not linearly independent, so it is not a basis. Now that we've seen one example where we tried to determine if a set of vectors was linearly independent or a spanning set, let's go ahead and look at another one. Now, without having to do all of the explanation between, if we just follow the process, what happens is if we want to determine if this set is linearly independent or spanning, I take this set of vectors and turn it into a matrix. So the matrix is going to be, each vector becomes a column. So I get 2, 3, 1, 4, 9, negative 2, 6, 12, negative 1. And now, what I want to do is I want to row reduce this matrix. So I'll go through and row reduce it. And what we'll get out is the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Therefore, if I want to determine if this is linearly independent, I would say, well, if I look at my leading ones, I have a leading one here, here, and here. So if I imagine these represent variables, there are no free variables. Because there are no free variables, we are linearly independent. If I want to determine whether or not I'm spanning, I'm going to see, does each row have a leading one in it? Yes, it does. If, say, this last row had been all zeros, we would say no. But because each row has a leading one in it, it does span the entire set of R cubed. Hence, what we have is that this set of vectors is both linearly independent and it spans R cubed. Therefore, this set of vectors is a basis of R cubed. Thank you for watching. As always, I hope you learned something today, and I hope you enjoyed the process along the way. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me to know which videos are helpful, and it helps other people to find these videos so that they can also get help. Thank you.